Hi all, welcome to Sabina's EDU. Today, I am going to discuss about database security in operating systems. That means how a database is secure in your operating system. I am planning to take this in two sessions. The first session includes introduction, advantages of database, security requirements of databases. And the session two includes reliability and integrity, sensitive data, and data mining. So now finally, students, you know what is database and what are the uses of database and how to use database in various applications. Okay, let's discuss how secure your data is and how secure your data is. Let's go with the introduction of database security. Database security refers to the various measures organizations take to ensure their databases are protected from internal and external threats. Database security includes protecting the database itself, the data it contains, its database management system, and the various applications that access. Let's discuss about the advantages of database. Database is a simple collection of data stored and maintained at one central location to which many people may have access as needed. The users are unaware of the physical arrangement. The unified logical arrangement is all they see. What are the advantages? Shared access. Shared access means users can use one common friendly set of data. And controlled access means only authorized users are allowed to view or to modify data values. And minimal redundancy means individual users do not have to correct and maintain their own sets of data. And data consistency means Change to a data value affects all users of the data value. And integrity means data values are protected against accidental or malicious and desirable changes. Database supports controlled shared access to a single repository of data. These are all about the advantages of database and let's Discuss about the security requirements. Yes. Security. security means what key steps should be installed to ensure the database is secure. And it includes physical database integrity, logical database integrity, elemental integrity. Auditability, access control, user authentication, and availability. Let's start with physical database integrity. It deals with challenges associated with correctly storing and fetching the data itself. The data of a database are immune to physical problems such as power failure, and someone can reconstruct the database if it is destroyed today. And next comes the logical database integrity. It maintains the structure and you can modify the value of any one field. It does not affect the other field. And next comes the elemental integrity. Element integrity. The data contained in each element, element are accurate. And auditability means it's possible to track or what has access to the elements in the database. And access control means a user is allowed to access only authorized data and different users can be restricted to different modes of access. Next, user authentication. User authentication means every user is positively identified both for the audit trail and for permission to access 
than data. And availability means users can access the database in general and all the data for which they are ordering. That's all about the security requirements of database and the, to the integrity of the data. What is integrity? If a database is served as a central repository of data, users must be able to trust the accuracy of the data values. This condition implies that the database administrator must be assured that updates are performed only by all the AC individuals. It also implies that the data must be protected from corruption, either by an outside illegal program action or by an outside force such as a fire or a power failure. Few situations can affect the integrity of a database. First, when the whole the database whole database is damaged. As happens, for example, if the storage reading is damaged, or when individual data items are unreadable, that is the second one. Integrity of the database as a whole is the responsibility of database management system, operating system, and the computing system manager. From the perspective of the operating system and the computing system manager, databases and DBMS are files and programs respectively. Therefore, one way of protecting the database as a whole is to regularly backup all files on the system. These periodic backups can be adequate controls against catastrophic failure. Sometimes an administrator needs to be able to reconstruct the database at the point of a failure. For instance, when the power fails suddenly, the bank's client may be in the middle of making transactions or students may be registering online for their classes. In these cases, owners want to be able to restore the system to a stable point without forcing users to redo their recently completed transactions. To handle these situations, the database management system must maintain a log of transactions. For example, suppose the banking system is designed so that a message is generated in a log, for example, it may be electronic or paper or both, each time a transaction is processed. In the event of a system failure, the system can obtain accurate account balances by reverting to a backup copy of the database and reposting all later transactions from the log. Yes. Element integrity. The integrity of database element is their correctness or accuracy. Ultimately, all the AC users are responsible for entering correct data in database. However, users and programs make mistakes collecting data, computing results, and entering values. Therefore, DBMS sometimes takes special action to help catch errors as they are made and to correct errors after they are inserted. Database achieves integrity of the database, structure and its individual elements. This corrective action can be taken in three ways. Field check, access control and change log. First one, field check. The DBMS can apply field check that is for appropriate values in a position. The field might be required to be numeric, an uppercase letter, or one of a set of acceptable characters. The check ensures that a value falls within specific bounds or is not greater than the sum of the values in two other fields. This check prevents simple errors as the data are entered. Second integrity action is afforded by control access control. Data files may contain data from several sources and redundant data may be stored in several different places. For example, 
The student's mailing address may be stored in many different campus files. In the register office for formal correspondence, in the food service office for dining hall privileges, at the bookstore for purchases, and in the financial aid office for accounting. And yet the student may not even be aware that each separate office has to address on file. If the student moves from one residence to another, each of the separate files requires correction. The third means of providing database integrity is maintaining a change log for the database. A change log lists every change made to the database. It contains both original and modified values. Using this log, a database administrator can undo any changes that were made in error. Databases achieve integrity of the database, its structure, and its individual. Elements. Next, come to the audit ability. First, an application has to generate an audit record of all access, read, or write to a database. Such a record can help to maintain the database integrity or at least to discover after the fact who has affected what values and when. The second advantage is that user can access protected data incrementally. That is, no single access reveals protected data, but a sequence, such a sequence, sequential access view together reveals the data. Next from the access control. Databases are often separated logically by user access privileges. For example, all users can be granted access to general data, but only the personal department can obtain salary data and only the marketing department can obtain sales data. Data pieces are useful because they centralize the storage and maintenance of data. Limited access is both a responsibility and a benefit of this centralization. The database administrator specifies who should be allowed access to which data, attribute, relation, field, record, or even element level. The DBMS must enforce this policy, granting access to all specified data or no access where prohibited. A user or program may have the right to read change, delete, or append to a value, add or delete entire fields or records or recognize the entire database. Database management systems implement their own access control at a level finer than what an operating system can do. Next about user authentication. DBMS can require rigorous user authentication. The DBMS might insist that the user pass both specific password and time of day check. This authentication supplements the authentication performed by the operating system. Next is availability. A DBMS has aspects of both a program and a system. It's a program that uses other hardware and software resources as to many users, the so only application run. Problems like multiple users access same record and the need to own or withhold unprotected data result in high availability requirements for a DBMS. Next is integrity, confidentiality, and availability. The three aspects of computer security clearly relate to database management system. Integrity applies to the individual elements of a database as well as to the database as a whole. Integrity is also a property of the structure of database and of the relationship of the database. Thus, integrity is a major concern in the design of database management system. And confidentiality is likewise a key issue with database because databases are often used to implement 
control the sharing of sensitive data. Access to data can be direct or indirect. Controlling direct access employs the access control technique. Indirect access is more difficult to control and we will be mainly used in direct access control. Finally, it's availability. It's important because of the shared access motivation underlying database development. That's all about the session one. And we'll continue with the second session. Anything about reliability and integrity, sensitive data, and data mining. Please post your queries and suggestions as comments. Also post the queries in Google Classroom or WhatsApp. Subscribe the channel for all the new videos. If you like the video, please do like and share the video. Thank you all.